What's up, guys? Welcome back to Entrepreneur Hour podcast and Entrepreneur Hour TV. Um, I'm not going to do my normal tidbits and like, you know, jumping into call to actions and stuff like that and like and subscribe, but please do all those things. Um, I just hit record today. Uh, I just did, right? And and the funny thing is, um, I am a, a diehard Michael Jordan fan, right? And so for a long time, um, both... Kobe Bryant and LeBron James were like threats. And as I saw it to Michael Jordan's greatness, right. And like potential, like I, when you get to a point where you, you grow up with somebody, right. And I grew up a huge sports fan and I was a big, um, had big basketball ambitions and dreams, right. I wanted to play college basketball and I would go outside, you know, being younger and growing up in Cincinnati, um, it gets cold. And I remember there were several occasions where my dad had to make me come inside because I didn't want to lose months where it was snowing and icy and stuff like that in Ohio. And I, I, I always imagined in my head that someone else was getting to practice when I wasn't, right? And <laughs> it's funny because I would shoot free throws just like with my gloves and everything. Like they probably didn't even help me at all in terms of like acquiring skills, right? And I would have to take a broomstick out with me right a broom and i'd have to whack at the net because it would get stuck every single time i shot and it's crazy but i put hours i sunk hours into that and later on in life was awesome for me because as i was in high school um a lot of people don't know this about me uh but i was the runner-up in the state of georgia the entire state in the free throw competition right and so i, I won like first it was the district then it was you know, or the school, then it was the district, then it was, you know, moving on to like regional, then it was the state. And at every single level I advanced and I won, except when I got to the state level and a guy made 25 straight and I made 23 out of 25 and he won. And so I thought about like, you know, man, though, maybe those days did pay off when I was shooting with gloves on in the, in the snow, you know, and, and, and having to whack the net. And so, um, I remember being, what was I 10 and hearing about this Kobe Bryant kid. Right. And watch him in the slam dunk contest. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm peeking around because the, you know, the way that where our house was, uh, my parents' bedrooms at the end of the hallway. And so they were, it was an older home. And so you, you had to be careful for the little creaks in the hallway, because if you stepped in certain spots, it would make a noise and I would give away that I was still awake when I wasn't supposed to be. And, but I, I, I was, I was determined to see what this kid was all about, right? This Kobe kid. And I remember like peeking through cause my dad would leave the door kind of semi open, like not fully closed, but uh, you know, not all the way open either. And like laying there and like peeking through and watching as he went. And if you watch this, you remember this, like it's like ingrained in my memory where he goes down the side and does like this, like, you know, under the basket, like boom, like tomahawk type dunk. And if I remember correctly, that was like the one that, that won the, the, the dunk contest. And so I started to think about, you know, after Sunday, and obviously if you're watching this, you, you already know what happened, right? Like nine people died in a helicopter crash in Los Angeles. And it's one of those moments where, you know, I got on social media and my wife and I were out enjoying a, an amazing Sunday afternoon and weather was awesome. And I just happened to get on Facebook and it was the first thing I saw. And, um, like I, like I, I honestly didn't believe it for like 48 hours. And then as I started to just like accept the reality of what had happened, uh, I started thinking about like, why is this bothering? Like outside of the fact that human being lost their life, right? Like, why is this bothering me so much? Like I didn't know this person. And for a large part of his career, I wasn't even a fan, you know, like I, whatever, you know, he, like he was good and I can appreciate and respect who he was and the way that he, you know, approached the game and, and his accolades and all those things. But early 2000s, I vehemently rooted against Kobe Bryant. Like I thought he was, I mean, he comes in the leagues and he's gonna be better than Michael Jordan. Like, my Michael Jordan? Like, no, you're not. You know, and then winning championships, and I felt like he like really lucked into Phil Jackson and Shaq, and I feel like Shaq carried the load. And so, like, I openly was very critical of Kobe Bryant. And so, why do I care so much? Why does this impact me at such a deep level? Other than the fact that a human being died, like, I turn on the news every single day, or other people that 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 you know that I've never met that have just lived in my two dimensional world of of seeing things on television have died and it didn't impact me in, in the ways, uh, that this did. Right. And, and maybe it's the, the tragedy that it is what happened. 
and and maybe it's just like you you start to view people uh, as these um, legendary figures that they don't they become immortalized right like that there's no way they could die or anything could happen to them definitely not at that age um, and so we were robbed of that of seeing what that second act would have been for Kobe but but I want to talk about what that means for you and, and what I have taken away. Um, from this and I think is always a really good reminder and maybe one that I don't know Kobe but maybe he want, would want of you have taken away as well um, and that's it you just never I mean this sounds really cliche but you just never know right you never know when your time has come and I think so many of us myself included I'm not I'm not you know guilt free of this we we focus on the things that we don't have and we complain about the things that aren't going well and you know we're we're critical of everything under the sun right and for me it, it's always amazing to get exposed to other environments whether that's traveling to other countries and, and seeing people that are less fortunate than i am um or or seeing something like this happen where somebody lost their life and then to find out that his daughter was there with him and you know some of their teammates and parents and stuff like that it's just god it's really tough you know and um so I think what you can do is this, what you can take away from this is the aftermath to me has been such a beautiful thing. Like watching people not know what to do or where to go. And so just going to Staples Center where they remember seeing this person's greatness, right? And paying their respects and just wanting to not be alone with that, but be with other like-minded people. Right. And I think that we spend so much of our lives divided and we spend so much of our time um, being critical of one another. Uh, and I think we have a really awesome opportunity as an entrepreneurial ecosystem. Right. You're watching this. You might be an entrepreneur. You might not. I mean, you might be just discovering this video. Um, but that's what we talk about on this channel. We talk about entrepreneurship. And I think we spend so much time measuring ourselves up to, against everybody else. And picking holes or saying, well, they don't do this well or they don't do that well and stuff like that. And I think to to a large degree, I think it would be awesome if we could unite for the common cause, right? Like everybody has something unique that they can bring. And we view competition through this lens that, that just really doesn't exist, right? Like the world literally is your potential customer, right? Like there's so many people and I do these numbers all the time and it just blows people's minds, right? About like, you know, even capturing a frag, like a small, small, small percentage of the market and, and how, you know, that still provides so much opportunity for you or someone else to, to, to provide their, their service or their, their product in some unique way that, that just, you just don't have the bandwidth to serve everybody in the world. Apple doesn't have the bandwidth to serve everybody in the world. There's no company that's ever existed, even Amazon, that can service everybody in the world. And there's always going to be something for someone else that they really value. And so, I think we, we, we cannibalize each other and we, we tear each other apart and, you know, we stay stuck. We stay stuck in this mindset of, well, I can't pursue this because someone else is already doing that. Or, you know, um, you know, I, I, I tried this and it's not working and I'm just giving up and, you know, whatever. Right. And it's just like you see somebody that reached the very, very top of their profession. Right. In ways that that many of us could only dream about ever achieving, myself included, right? To be the best of the best, and if you look at like percentage wise, the 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 elite few even get into get a scholarship to a Division One college, let alone go to the NBA. It's one of the hardest sports to move on to the next level, percentage wise. And I know this because I I played basketball, and we looked at the percentages of people that actually go from high school into the college ranks at the Division One level. Um, it's an astronomical, it's way less than 1% of, of all high school players actually get into a division one school with a scholarship. It is almost impossible to do. And so to move beyond that, skip college altogether, right? And be a beyond even that small, small, small percentage that's less than 1%. And then to ascend to a point where you are literally the best in the world, arguably at one point in time for, for 20 plus years you're able to do that in front of the world and, and literally have the world watch you grow up in front of their eyes. I started to think about impact and I started to think about the impact that, that I want to make. 
And it really drove me, right? And it drove me to create this video. Um, and so I think that's the thing, right? Like Kobe talked about Mamba mentality. And I think that we need more of that. I think that we need to fixate on not this other stuff, you know, this these distractions or these excuses or these reasons why we can't do something. And we just need to go for it. Whatever matters to you, you just need to go for it. Whatever matters to me, there's no excuses, right? Like it just needs to be done. And it doesn't matter what the naysayers say. It doesn't matter what your critics say. It doesn't matter whatever your ups and downs have been. None of that stuff matters, right? You have the opportunity to define whatever legacy it is that you want to create, right? Whatever that is against all odds, you have the ability to do that. And I think we give ourselves an out on that. Um, and maybe that thing's not important to you and that's okay too, right? So I think we just need to embrace what it is. For me, impact is a huge thing. I want to reach a, a ridiculous amount of people, right, with my message. And as I look at my YouTube channel, like we just started and I'm like, okay, what can I do to get to the next level? What can I do to get to the next level? What can I do then to get to the next level, right? Instead of for me, focusing on the things that I don't have, right? Focusing on, you know, my health challenge that I've had. And for those that have been following this channel, you know what that those are, like chronic health ailment. It looks like looking at a very, you know, huge gap of my life cut out if I kept continuing down that path and didn't address it. That was scary. That was, that's terrified me. And I don't, I, I don't want to, and I've always been really cognitively aware of this. Like I've always like, maybe to a degree that's not even normal. Um, but I remember telling my mother when I was like five and I said, um, I don't, want to die or I said I want to change the world in some way right like I, and that sounds like silly for like a five-year-old to say but I but I at the end effectively what I was saying is I don't want to go out of this thing and not have an amazing legacy right and I think one of the things that was so beautiful about what happened on Sunday was the tributes the people like me and you that were deeply deeply moved right um and and, and almost couldn't even function on Sunday after seeing what happened all because some guy could was really good at, at throwing a ball through a hoop that's unbelievable to me right and so i just think you need to recognize the power that you have the ability that you have to impact people on a deep and a meaningful level and i hope that pushes you uh, i hope that moves you to look deep inside and figure out what it is that you really want in this world right because we're not promised tomorrow you're not barely promised today I'm sure the moment that Kobe woke up Sunday morning, the last thing was on his mind was, this is it for me, right? And so you don't know that. And all you can do is seize the moment. All you can do is capitalize on the here and on the now and get really, really uh, entrenched in, in alignment with what it is that you want to do. How do you want to serve? In what ways do you want to be remembered? And so, guys, this has been completely off the script. I, I, there's no slides here. There's no nothing. I'm just kind of rattling off my thoughts. But... Yeah, for me, I'm doubling down. Like I, I, I'm, I'm all in on on creating a legacy that I can be proud of. Because at the end of the day, you know, God forbid something ends up happening to me, and and I don't get to see this thing through. As far as you know, I maybe I think that I'm going to right. And we just don't think about those things at all. Um, I want people to be like that guy had an impact on me. That guy in some way changed my life. Um, that guy in some way made my life better. And even if it's that one person or if it's, you know, God forbid, if it ends up being a million people, like kudos to you. But I think it's time for us to reassess where we are, what we want to do, what we want to be remembered for and the legacy that we want to create. So I hope that moves you. I hope that inspires you as it has me sending thoughts and prayers and, and every amount of positive vibes that I can to Kobe's um, friends and family and all the people that actually did know him beyond a two dimensional world. And hope you guys are, are well, and I hope you guys are ready to go take control of that future and to own your destiny and to create a life that I know is possible for you. It doesn't matter where you are right now. I've been at the highest of highs in some cases. I've been the lowest of lows in my own very short life. And I can tell you this, when I thought I was down and out, man, it's amazing how fast things can bounce back. So I don't care where you are. It's 100% possible. And here's the beautiful thing about that. Your challenges, whatever they may be, just make your story that much more compelling. Because just succeeding and just having triumphs, that's a boring story, right? Nobody can relate to that. Everybody can relate to the challenges. Everybody can relate to the to the, the adversity you've had to overcome, 
right? And so wherever you are, no matter what that is, I promise you just keep moving forward. Just keep persevering and keep tapping into what it is that moves you, what it is that drives you and go make that change in the world. I'll see you guys in the next one.